There is a dimension when you come into this kingdom where it is your faith, not God's determination, that is, de is deciding what's actually happening in your life. And see, this religious idea, well, the Lord will make a way. Well, God will do it. If God wants it to be done, no, no. God has already told us in his word what he wants for us. How, whether or not we appropriate it, glory to God, whether or not we go get it is up to us. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. The Word of God tells us certain things concerning uh, the healing power of Jesus of Nazareth and the right and the privilege that those of us who have covenant relationship with him have in relation to health and wholeness and wellness. And so I think it is time and high time that those of us who are believers in Christ Jesus stop listening to the world's news and start listening to the good news concerning uh, what the Lord Jesus does and what our faith in response to him can do. So uh, Matthew chapter 9 is uh, where we have uh, begun these teaching. it's teachings. It's been our foundational text. Uh, and I want to read that again, but today we are going to get to uh, some other uh, examples in the scripture where this very same thing, your faith has made you well, is articulated by the Lord Jesus, and we're going to move through it. So I want you to pay very close attention. Now, Matthew chapter 9, verse 18, and it says, While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come lay your hands on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly... A woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, for she said to herself, one translation said she said within herself. Uh, in the actual Greek, uh, the verb is in the tense of continuous action. So it's not just she said, she said and kept on saying. For she said to herself, if only I may touch, the, touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Now get it. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Now one of the things we said about this passage is that it is clear that, uh, that it was the power of God uh, that literally manifested the healing and the recovery, the healing or the recovery in the woman's body. It was the power of God, and we understand that. But Jesus, when he speaks to the woman, after he has heard what she did, and remember the Bible says in one of the other accounts that after this encounter of healing, she told him all that had happened. That's how Matthew and the other writers have a history of what was going on with this woman. That's how they know she had had this issue for 12 years because after her healing, she testifies as to what has happened. We'll get to that in just a moment. And when Jesus hears what she says, he says to her daughter, your faith 
is what made you well. Now, again, we understand the power of God was involved, but there were many people around that were touching Jesus at the same time this woman was there, and none of them uh, received healing that we know about, although the power of God was at work. So it was her faith, Jesus says, that caused this to happen. Not just his power, but it was her faith in response to or her faith uh, with knowledge of the fact that he had the power to do it. That is what Jesus says manifested healing in her body. So as the Spirit of the Lord uh, led us into this teaching, he told me to deal with three specific things as relates to uh, this subject, your faith can make you well. First of all, he told me to deal with making sure that you and I understand what faith is. And, and, and when I say what faith is, I mean what Bible faith is. And uh, for the last several weeks, we've been dealing with that. Because once again, Jesus says, your faith did it. Now, if her faith did it, yours can do it too. God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. So if your faith can make you well, then bless God, I need to know what it is. I've sh said this uh, 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 before, I'll say it again four times in the word of God. We're told that the just, or those of us who have been justified, shall live by faith. Well, if once I have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, once... I am a, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Once I have been justified, and that's uh, what it means when it says the just. It doesn't just mean good people. No, it means those who have been justified or made right with God through their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work. Those people are going to live by faith. And whatever they get, whatever happens in their lives is going to be a product of their faith. Now, when you understand this child of God, when you understand this, you understand why certain people, although they are Christians, are not experiencing all of the goodness that the Word of God has promised. Certain people, although they are Christians, although they are born again, are not recovering like other people, are not prospering like other people, do not have peace like uh, other people in the kingdom of God. Why? Because there is a level, child of God, in this thing where your faith and not God begins to determine what's happening to you. I'm going to say that again. There is a dimension when you come into this kingdom where it is your faith, not God's determination, that is, de is deciding what's actually happening in your life. And see, this religious idea, well, the Lord will make a way. Well, God will do it. If God wants it to be done. No, no. God has already told us in his word what he wants for us. How, whether or not we appropriate it, glory to God, whether or not we go get it is up to us. It's like when your mama would call you uh, and say dinner is ready. She's telling you it's available. Now, whether you come out of the street and come in the house and eat is up to you. God has done the same thing. He has set the table, and your faith is what gives you the seat at the table to eat what he has prepared. So I want us, so, so, we, so we started looking at what faith is. Then the second thing the Lord told me to deal with after we have dealt with that, which we will probably come to a conclusion for this time of teaching today and then get into this other area. The second area is to look at what their action of faith was in the instances in the scripture where Jesus says to people, your faith made you well, or your faith accomplished this, then the Lord said, I want you to look at what their action of faith was, or better put, I want you to look at what I call faith in those instances. Well, that's that's important. He said, I want you to understand what I, God, what God, God says, I want you to know what I called faith because that's what I responded to in these situations and that's what caused healing or soundness or wellness to manifest. And then finally, uh, the Lord said in this teaching, I want you to deal with helping the people of God understand the difference between what faith looks like in the old covenant and what faith looks like in the new covenant. What faith looks like 
under the ministry of Jesus, because remember, Jesus was not ministering in the new covenant. He was fulfilling the old and beginning in his three and a half years of ministry to lay down the principles of the new. This is so important for the children of God to understand. Jesus was not a new covenant minister. <laughs> he was finishing the old covenant in his earthly ministry. And, uh, and once he finishes the work, once he dies on the cross, he is buried, he is raised from the dead, he ascends on high and then seats at, is seated at the right hand of God, then the new covenant goes into operation. And faith in the new covenant now that we have a seated Jesus at the right hand of the Father who has finished the work, looks and sounds differently from faith in the old covenant. And if, man, I'm, I'm, I can't get into this today. We're going to get into this in a week or two. And if you are modeling the actions of people that you see in Jesus' ministry only, you may actually be falling short of faith in your covenant. And this is something the Spirit of God taught me in a faith exam that he took me through that changed my life forever, and I want you to know it. Now, let's, let's do a couple of things so that we can move into what we have to get to today. One of the things that we've been sharing, if you've been with me in this teaching, uh, especially the last uh, couple of weeks. Of course, last Sunday I was in another zone. I had to share something specific. But if you were with us on Wednesday night, one of the things that you know is it is important that you and I understand what faith is from God's standpoint or what faith is from the standpoint of the Word of God because religion and tradition has given us a definition of faith which is not actually the Bible's definition of faith. Which is why when I talk about this, I call it Bible faith, meaning faith as the Bible says it is, or faith as the Word of God tells us it is. Because once again, this faith thing is so important that we can't, we can't endure not having the proper understanding and connotation of it. So, um, we, we looked at James chapter 2, verse number 14, and I, I shared a couple of things. You know, when God says in Isaiah 55 that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, then it stands to reason that, that his definitions may not necessarily be our definitions. So what we call faith may not be exactly what he calls faith. And in most cases, in the religious and traditional Christianity, that we have inherited, most Christians think they're in faith when they're actually not. And we made the distinction that believing alone is not faith, and faith uh, uh, is more than what, than what the Bible just calls believing. Now, once again, where do you get that James chapter 2? And we talked there about the working definition of faith, that James chapter 2 gives us a working definition of faith. And we talked about the fact there uh, in James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26, where James uh, tells us that faith without works is dead. Put it up, please. James chapter 2, verse number 14. James chapter 2 and verse number 14. Uh, where James says, what does it profit, my brother? And if someone says he has faith and does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or, or sister is naked and destitute of daily food. Now, one of the things we said here is that the word faith here is the Greek word pistis, which is conviction or persuasion. And the word works here is the Greek word ergon, which means corresponding action. Corresponding action. An action that co goes with and responds to what you say you believe. So faith here means conviction or persuasion, and works here means a corresponding action or an action that goes with and responds to your conviction 
or your persuasion. And what I did was I read it like that. I'm going to do it one more time here uh, for the sake of understanding. So you understand what the Bible means when it talks about faith as opposed to what most people mean even in religious and or Christian circles when they talk about faith. And if all you've got is religious faith, you're in trouble, especially in times like these. So, so pay attention now. It says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has a conviction or persuasion, which is a belief, if someone says he has a conviction or persuasion but does not have corresponding action, can his conviction or persuasion save him? You see what I'm doing? Everywhere the word faith is, I'm reading conviction or persuasion. Everywhere the word works is, I'm reading corresponding action. When you do that, a clarity comes that uh, is life changing. Look at this, verse 15. If a brother or sister is naked, uh, uh, is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Now, a lot of preachers and Christians have taught that this is, you know, the scripture exhorting you to have good works. No, that's not what's being taught here. What's being taught here is if you say something, but you don't act on what you're saying, it's not going to bring any results. That's what's being taught. This is not about Christians doing good works. This is about making sure that what you do corresponds with what you say you believe. If you believe a person should be warmed and filled, do something about it. Amen. So, so watch this now. Verse 16. And one of you says, then depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What is the problem? Thus also a conviction or a persuasion or a belief by itself, if it does not have a corresponding action, is dead. Now I've said this before. One of the things that James, by the spirit of revelation, tells us is you can have dead faith or living faith. And most Christians have dead faith because they think believing is faith, and it isn't. Believing is the beginning of faith. Watch this. But someone will say, you have conviction or persuasion, and I have corresponding action. Show me your conviction of or persuasion without your corresponding action, and I will show you my conviction and my persuasion by my corresponding action. Look at verse 19. You believe that there is one God. You do well. The demons believe that. And tremble. what is he saying? He's telling you believing is not enough. He's saying the demons believe certain things about God, but because they never act in accordance with what they know and believe, nothing ever happens in the transformation uh, of, uh, of it. Why? Well, there are other reasons for that, but get the principle. Believing by itself won't produce anything. Watch this. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that a conviction or a persuasion without a corresponding action is dead. Now that's the second time he said that. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know that sitting in bed believing that Jesus is a healer is not going to get you well. He wants you to understand that sitting in church said, I know the Lord will make a way somehow is not going to get you out of a situation. He wants you to understand that the Lord is going to come by and see about me is not going to change your situation. That's dead. It's not going to produce anything. And this is why there are people who are Christians who get sick with illness and disease and are attacked and they die when they could have been made well and there are others who put their faith into operation and they recover. Glory to God. Why? What's the difference? Well, and see this, and this is what religion said. Well, the Lord, the Lord wanted Sister Ellie Mae to come on home. N not at 37, he didn't. She didn't live the promise. Not at 45, not at 50. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, stay with me. 
uh, stay, 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 stay with me. Now, now, Sister Ellie May may have wanted to go home and wanted to stop fighting, or Sister Ellie May may have not known how to fight. The fight of faith. <laughs> See, we got to stop putting death on God's doorstep that he had nothing to do with. And when you understand what Jesus says about what your faith can do, what the God kind of faith can do, you will stop lying on God and, and attributing to him death that he had nothing to do with. Mm. Let me keep reading. But someone will say, you, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at verse 19. You believe that there's one God? You do well. Even the demons believe. I want you to underline that. Even the demons believe. Even the demons believe. Even the demons believe. Even the demons believe. So then believing, as we have come to understand it, is not sufficient for transformation. Faith is what is required for transformation. Now watch this, verse 20. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that a conviction or persuasion without a corresponding action is dead? Now I want you to see what the scripture just did. It called you foolish if you're thinking that your conviction or persuasion is going to get something done if you don't have an action that corresponds with it. Watch this. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Or was not Abraham our father justified by his corresponding action? When he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar. See, I was just, I was just teaching on this subject. And see, what, what, what he's saying here, Abraham could have sat there at the bottom of that mountain thinking, you know, I know the Lord is able. I know God is able. I know the Lord is able to keep my son. I know the Lord is able to raise up my son. I know the Lord is able. But if he had stayed at the bottom of the mountain saying the Lord is able, he never would have become who he is in the presence of God, the father of us all, the Bible says, in the presence of God, Romans 4. He never would have become that man. Why? Because it's when he offers Isaac up in Genesis uh, 20 and, and 22 where God says, because you have done this thing, not because you believed this thing, because you have done this thing. It was when you acted on what you believed that your faith was made known. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch. Was well, not Abraham, verse 21, our father justified by his corresponding action when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Do you see that his conviction and his persuasion was working together with his corresponding action? See, now is when we've got faith coming. When your conviction or your persuasion starts working with your corresponding action. Watch this. Do you see? that his conviction or persuasion was working together with his corresponding action, and by his corresponding action, his conviction or persuasion was made perfect or complete or full or whole. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God. Now we know what the Bible means when it says believing. When the Bible talks about believing God, it's talking about a conviction or persuasion plus a corresponding action not just a conviction or persuasion by itself. See, a conviction or persuasion in the heart won't change a circumstance. Boy. See, you could say, uh, you could believe until the lights go out in the universe that Jesus is Lord. But if you don't say it, if you don't act on that and respond to what you say you're believing, salvation never occurs. For with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation doesn't happen just because you got a gooey feeling about Jesus in your heart. Stay with me. Say with me. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted or credited him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by his corresponding action and not by his conviction or persuasion only. 
Likewise was not, the, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by her corresponding action when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Now this is very important once again because like I said, Rahab was not in the covenant, but the Bible says she was spared, saved because she acted on what she believed. Look at verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And I've said it before, just like a body that has no spirit in it. Once the spirit leaves the body, the body is dead. He says just like that, if there is no corresponding action to what you say you believe, your faith is dead just like that body is dead. And your faith, dead faith, will produce exactly what a dead body will produce. Nothing in this three-dimensional material world. Now, you say, Bishop, Bishop McClendon, that's important. So faith without works is dead. And then we went to Romans 6, which I'm not going to teach again. And we found out uh, that faith, ha- well, actually, we went to 2 Corinthians 4.13. I will go there. Go to 2 Corinthians 4.13. And we found out that faith has a vital principle and a mental disposition. Every single week, tens of thousands of people around the globe connect with this ministry, connect with this prophetic word through the PEC. You say, Bishop McClendon, what? is a PEC member. That's a part of our prophetic e-community. And those who join us on Facebook Live, on Twitter, on Periscope, and receive the Word of God. If you are not yet a PEC member, you're not a PEC partner, you're not yet a part of the prophetic e-community, I want you to go to bishopmcclendon.com and just sign up. It doesn't cost you anything But the value, I promise you, is going to be enormous. Once you become a PEC partner with us, that enables me to begin to share with you faith-building letters, to share with you the prophetic insights, the prophetic words that God is giving me. And that is so important for your life, especially as things begin to escalate. You're going to need the Word of God. I need it every single day of my life. And uh, I'm grateful to the Lord that He's provided us this avenue to communicate with you. So go to bishopmcclendon.com. Matter of fact, you can go right now and connect. It's very simple. Again, it doesn't cost you anything, but you will be getting information. You'll be getting letters, prophetic words. You'll be getting things that the Spirit of God is giving me to edify your life.